Hello everyone. So welcome back to our classes on epidemiology. So today we'll be dealing bias in research. Uh, so we we have covered all the uh, basic chapters of descriptive, analytical, and experimental epidemiologies. So let's see what is bias in research. So as the name as the title suggested, uh, bias is an un unavoidable uh, unavoidable error in a research. So you just cannot do a perfect research, uh, a perfect scientist or a perfect investigator uh, is is always uh, at a risk of uh, producing an error. So it is unavoidable, 100% uh, perfect results you will not get in any study. So let's see uh, the bias in research. So in this class, actually, uh, we are seeing bias in case control and cohort study so those studies are more uh, subjected to the attack of bias than descriptive and experimental so descriptive study there is no comparison group so that itself is a big uh, bias so in experimental group also there are many types of bias will arise uh, but uh, the most commonly affected study designs are case control and uh, cohort study okay so bias is uh, nothing but it is an error but it is in a systematic error not a random error so there will be basically two types of errors the one is systematic and one is random error so suppose um, let let me tell you one very simple example so you'll get uh, get a uh, idea about bias so uh, if we are trying to measure uh, blood pressure of 100 people Okay, so it's part of our study. So blood pressure is being checked for 100 people. So by mistake, uh, you get a phone call in between and you uh, you didn't record one person's uh, reading properly. So that is a random error. So it, may, it, it might have happened or that chances of therein, uh, all the studies or all the investigation and all the um, reading measurement. But what happens or what if the machine itself is wrong? So the entire 100 people are giving wrong results. The machine itself is wrong. The BP apparatus you are using is wrong. It is giving plus 20 millimeter mercury extra measurement. So the all 100 participants is getting or producing different BP. So that is bias. It is a systematic error. The error will be systematically repeated. Okay, so basically, we have three types of bias. The first one, these are the three common types. Okay, so the first one is selection bias. Second one is information. And third one is confounding bias. So selection bias is nothing but uh, when we select participants into case and control or into cohort group. If there is any problem arises there, it will result in bias. Second one is information. There will be a lot of collection of information in all the studies. So if anything goes wrong in information, that becomes information bias. And last one is confounding or third variable bias. Okay. We'll come into detail one by one. So first we are seeing the bias in bias case control study. The first one is selection bias in case control study. So this is known as prevalence incidence or selective survival bias. This is uh, commonly seen in case control study as a result of selective survival among the prevalent cases. Okay, the problem is uh, when we are uh, doing a case control study. Okay, so today we are starting a case control study. So it is about uh, cancer uh, and its outcome something. So all the cancer patients will be included. So the prevalence incidence bias uh, in cancer uh, type of studies the cases will be of the recent type and a very old type that is an incident case and a prevalent case okay so it is a since it is a case control study the cases which we included must be of a recent origin or a long-standing chronic disease which you must have suffering for 10 years or 7 years okay. 
or uh, it could be um, diagnosed with cancer class 2 okay so all will be considered as case so what happens is um, when we include both the type of cases in the same study that is incidence case and prevalence case in the same study the response will be different so uh, this type of mass introduced into case control as a result of selective survival among the prevalent cases Okay, so prevalent cases means the cases which are being cases for a particular longer period of time. Okay, that duration is a factor uh, producing bias. So in selecting cases, we have we are having a late look at the disease. So the disease will be uh, seen among the patients, or so diseases uh, occurred. Uh, among the patients at very different point of time so that uh, will create a bias in uh, bias in our case control study that is known as selection bias that is particularly prevalence incidence or selective survival bias okay so the second one is second type of uh, selection bias is admission rate or Parkinsonian bias so this bias is uh, named after Dr. Joseph uh, Beckson. Okay, Joseph Beckson was Beckson in was so who recognized this problem because most of the case control studies will be done at hospital because the cases will be always at hospital. Cases will not be at the uh, public. So once he's diagnosed as case, he will be uh, admitted or will be going to hospital. But actually, it will not represent the general uh, population scenario because you cannot expect the same number of cases in the public okay because the hospitals are always over represented with the cases so such type of bias is known as uh, bergson's bias or bergsonian bias so second type is information bias the bias which arises when we collect information from our case and control so the first one is memory or recall bias. So we ask questions to controls and cases. The same questions we asked about their past history. But what happens is the cases are having uh, more chance to uh, respond to your questions because they are actually having the disease, not the controls. The same questions you ask to the controls, they will not have much to say about the disease because they are not having any disease. So that way uh, it creates a problem that type of uh, bias is known as memory or recall bias and the information bias another type is telescopic bias this is a psychological phenomena telescopic effect uh, when people ask about a recent uh, incidents we may uh, tell them the events which might have occurred very past so the telescopic effect is uh, can be seen up to three years so it, it will be uh, a shift in events between uh, these three years that is ago things which happened uh, past three years will be reported as recent events and the recent events will be reported as very past events okay so that is a psychological phenomena when people are asked about the recent past they uh, might report the events which occurred very long ago okay that is known as telescopic bias Another type of uh, information bias is interviewer's bias okay, or exposure suspicion bias. If the interviewer who is doing study knows about hypothesis, he will definitely try to change the result because he is up to a mission of uh, proving his hypothesis. Okay. So ultimately he wanted to prove something. So in that direction, the responses will go off definitely. He might be changing some responses or there are high chances of uh, changing the responses of the cases. So that type of bias is known as interviewer's bias because the interviewer knows the hypothesis means it will lead him to question the cases more thoroughly than control. If he knows whose cases, whose controls and if he knows the hypothesis, definitely there will be chance of bias. And the last one is Hawthorne effect or observer bias. This is also a uh, psychological phenomena when we know that we are being watched, we uh, 
give our more effort in our classroom also when uh, teacher is uh, watching us we try to uh, study well or study more at least we pretend that um, we study well that is observe as when a case and control when a participant is known as they are being studied they automatically try to alter their response because they are being watched or they are being observed that is known as observer bias or Hawthorne effect when human subjects of experiment change their behavior simply because they are being studied so the last one is bias due to confounding or third variable bias this is a very crucial bias so suppose um, a person who is consuming alcohol chance of uh, congestive heart disease congenite congestive heart disease okay so we are studying our independent variable is alcohol consumption and this is our dependent variable this is cause this is outcome okay so we are studying this case control study we will get an odds ratio and which says that seven times risk of people who consumes alcohol to get this disease but what is we are missing here is the same person is a habit of smoking that we are not taken into consideration okay smoking has an effect on this heart disease at the same time people who consumes alcohol tend to smoke more regularly so this effect we didn't take so this effect is concealed here the total seven odds ratio the strength of association is not true but it is concealed the actual effects because the third variables are into action so this third variables effects are to be considered when we are doing a research so if you are uh, removing or if you are not uh, including uh, the variables which could affect both cause and outcome that might create a bias which is known as confounding bias so these all third variables which has an effect which has an effect on in uh, cause and outcome on honest confounding factors and the bias arise due to the confounding factors is known as confounding bias or third variable bias okay so in case control study what we do is we do matching to avoid this bias so we know matching uh, age and gender matching individual and group matching so case control study we have to follow matching otherwise this bias will arise so next is bias in cohort study okay the same bias selection information and confounding bias so under selection bias we have non concern bias and missing data bias so in this class i am dealing only very few bias bias is a very long chapter it can be taken uh, for maybe 10 10 20 hours so that much biases are there but i am dealing only with case control and cohort study very few biases Selection bias in cohort study is non concern bias and missing data bias. The so non concern concern bias is we know cohort study, it is a follow up study. A same group of uh, cohort will be followed up for a particular period of time. So, what happens is this may arise because the originally selected members of cohort may refuse to participate. Okay, so uh, they have uh, given permission to be under study at the beginning, but uh, later they uh, did not give consent so that becomes uh, non concern bias and missing data bias when we collect uh, when we study records on some individuals are missing or incomplete okay so we take information uh, their complete information is not available or their uh, because it's being followed up uh, at we'll be uh, checking the data at regular intervals so uh, they might not be giving uh, consent or they might not be participating throughout the study so the data will be missing so in such cases uh, the information uh, no in such cases the selection of participants will be a problem so such uh, loss of participants uh, will create the selection bias which is known as non consent bias uh, bias and missing data bias okay so it is due to uh, the follow-up period they give non-consent or the data will be missing so second one is information bias the information which we collect from people uh, is different uh, one example is diagnostic bias so diagnostic bias is also known as diagnostic suspicion so if you know the knowledge of subjects prior exposure so in um, cohort study there will be exposure 
uh, and uh, the beginning of the study will be free of disease then they will be exposed and they will develop disease after a period of time so if you know subjects prior exposure um, that will cause a diagnostic pass so such information will be uh, different uh, between uh, the comparison and this uh, cohort group so that create a information bias because the information we collect will be different because of the diagnosis because of the prior knowledge subjects uh, prior knowledge about um, subjects uh, i mean knowledge about subjects prior exposure so the same uh, confounding bias will also arise here so the factors which affect both uh, both exposed and unexposed group so such factors has to be dealt very cautiously in any study uh, otherwise the relative risk or odds ratio which uh, we get will be totally misinterpreted mm, so the confounding or third variable bias or confounding factors has to be taken care so cautiously in any study so if it is not taken uh, otherwise uh, the results what we get will not be proper okay so the uh, last bias is post hoc bias post hoc means nothing but we are not getting uh, uh, some association or the result we wanted but we keep on doing it retching. we keep on arranging or keep on uh, trying to keep on doing uh, the dredging or the data dredging or uh, and then we try to find out um, some data to test its significance okay so that is nothing but finding an association by data data and data dredging and then using the same data to test its significance so the actual data is not used but instead of the data which might give us a positive result is being used from the original data that is known as data and uh, data dredging so it is known as post hoc bias post hoc means after the effect okay so such uh, biases also there in quad study so we'll have a just a recap uh, the case control study bias is commonly three types selection information and confounding uh, the selection bias in case controller prevalence incidence bias or selective survival then admission or uh, Beckinsonian bias information which has memory recall or telescopic bias or interview bias or Hawthorne effect or observer bias and the third one is bias due to confounding or third variable bias in cohort studies the selection bias is non-consent or missing data bias information bias is uh, diagnostic bias then the confounding bias and the last one post hoc bias uh, as data reaching bias okay that's all about biasing this is a very brief idea about bias which occurs in case control and cohort study neither the descriptive or experimental study are uh, clear of any uh, biases all the study designs will be having n number of biases but we are dealing with very important uh, biases in case control and cohort study Okay, so I'll come up with a, another class on ophthalmology. Thank you.